Hello, my name is Sue Hampton, and I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, where I operate and founded a music school called Love Divine Music Conservatory. I'm here today to talk about the Hammond B3 C3 organ as it is played in the churches, especially with the gospel music, and to explain how one who already plays maybe jazz or blues may want to segue into the gospel or churchy sound today. I'm going to start with giving you a little bit of history about this organ. This is actually the A100, which was kind of modified to go along with the speaker that we're going to be talking about that goes along with this organ, which is the Leslie speaker. But the most popular organs that we play in the churches will be the B3, C3, because of their uniqueness of sound and tone quality. Before we can turn uh, the organ on, I want to talk about what makes it work. The speaker, I'm going to start with that. The Leslie speaker, this organ is, uh, has no sound of its own. It has to be connected to the speaker. And the only speaker that really gives this organ the whoop that it has or the force or the dynamics that you will hear will be the Leslie speaker. This speaker came along in 1940. It was invented by a man named Don Leslie. Now, the Hammond itself was invented by Lawrence Hammond in Evanstown, Chicago in 1937. His idea was not to invent an organ. He actually did not know what he had invented. He was just working with instruments and clocks and different mechanical things. And he stumbled upon this device that runs off nothing but tubes that resemble TV tubes, wires, and draw bars, and presets. It is not the pipe organ. It is not a prototype of the pipe organ, but it can sound like the pipe organ, and it can sound like other instruments as well, and it can be original in that with these draw bars that you see here, you can actually create your own sound. No one draw bars, nine draw bars, and they're color coded, and I'll talk about that too. But no draw bar has a unique family uh, within itself. In the organ, you have four families or four groups of sounds. You have the flute, you have the reed, and you have the string, and you have the diapason, which is the foundation of all organs. Now, in order to uh, turn this organ on, start with this switch on the left. Now, this switch on the left is called the uh, starter switch. You hold it, and you'll hear the organ parts come on. You hold it for about maybe 15 to 30 seconds. And most people think you have to keep holding it to turn the organ on, but you don't. You release the starter and turn on the run switch. In a few seconds, I can hear the motor to the speaker coming on. That way I will know that both components are working. And of course, I can test it. And it should be on. There we go. Another thing that I want to express uh, back to the speaker is that the Leslie is the only uh, speaker that we have that actually has moving parts inside of it. You have a small horn at the top. You have a big drum at the bottom. And those parts move when I control it with this little switch over here. It says chorale and tremolo. And those are just effects. If I have it on tremolo, it's going to sound like that. When I turn it off, you can hear the horn and the drum were going around. Now they have slowly stopped, and I'm going to turn it back on. And you'll hear it. You hear the sound as the horn is going around faster. The drum now is going to shut itself off.
So that one thing about the organ makes it very wonderful, an awesome instrument and an individualized instrument. There are many effects on this organ. You have these tabs over here, which I'll just tell you what they are. These are effects. Basically, these four tabs on the right are for percussion effects, and they only work with this black key up here, the B natural key. And they sound sort of like a little chime or bell. And when I don't have it on, it'll sound a little different. Over here, I'm going to talk about the white tabs. They are soft, which controls the volume of the organ, loud or soft. The vibrato of the swell, the vibrato of the grate. The swell is actually the upper manual, because as you can see, this organ has two manuals. Now, I've got the swell on the upper manual. I can turn the vibrato off. Same for the bottom manual, which is called the grate. You have vibrato grate on or off. This is off. This is on. There's also a little round switch that says vibrato and chorus. You've got C3, well, C1, C2, C3, V1, V2, V3. Most organists that play in the church prefer to use, set this tab to C3. Because it's going to give you, as you're building your sound, it's going to give you a more dynamic sound, just an overall cathedral choral sound. Whereas if you have it on C1, you'll still hear it, but it won't have the force that it had C3. Now with the V, which is vibrato, we want to be careful about using that sound because if you don't know how to really play the organ with these effects, it can make your uh, organ sound like you're playing in a funeral. Now as we move on, you see that these are the keys that you play, the regular black and white but you'll notice that you have a set over here that are just the opposite, they're reversed. The sharps and flats are white and the keys are black. When we are setting up the organ, these are presets incidentally. And inside of here you have loud sounds, soft sounds, uh, you have flute sounds, you have French horn sounds, oboe sounds, trumpet sounds, strings and trumpet. There's a mixture of sound. You have full organ. It's all already preset into the instrument. So if I don't know how to use these drawbar settings, I can just switch on a button. For example, this key right here is full organ. full organ and of course I'm going to show you how to get the full organ using the draw bars in just a minute. All the rest of these are presets. They have sounds built in them and when you get to the organ the first thing I would do would be to see what each sound is. Some sound like strings, some sound like horn, some sound like the human voice. You do have a human voice inside of this instrument. 